Matthew chapter number 6. We'll begin reading verse number 30. If you're a student of the Bible, you know that this is one of the greatest sermons ever preached. The Lord Jesus is preaching the Sermon on the Mount. It encompasses several chapters here in the beginning of Matthew. And uh, listen to what the Lord says. Again, read in verse number 30. The Bible says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing, the good testimonies, the good time of fellowship we enjoyed. Lord, we just thank you for your people. Lord, we are grateful to be able to assemble in the house of God tonight. Lord, as Miss Cindy testified, we do have much to th praise you for. Lord, we do have roofs over our heads. We do have food on our table, clothes on our backs. Lord, you've been good to us. Lord, you didn't have to be good to us, but you've been good to us. Uh, and Father, we bless your holy name. And God, we're thankful you're God that never changes. We're thankful, Lord, that we can put our trust in the anchor of uh, and the rock of ages and the one that is faithful and true. And Father, we bless your holy name. Now, I pray you'd help us from the simple truths of the word of God tonight. Help us to grow. And then, Lord, help us to glow and help us to go and tell others about the goodness of Jesus. Now, Father, bless each and every heart here tonight. You know the need. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here unsaved, God, I pray tonight you'd convict them and save them. I pray for somebody here tonight saved, but they're cold on God, that, Lord, tonight, Lord, we'd see them uh, 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 return to the center of the will of God. God, I pray if there's somebody here tonight, they're saved, they're serving God, but, Lord, they're just not where they need to be. I pray that won't be able to be said of them when the final service, uh, final amen of the service uh, is spoken. And then, Father, we certainly pray for those that are facing obstacles, hardships, uh, Oh, Lord, uh, things they thought they may never face in their life, I pray tonight you'd give them clear direction, and Lord, you'd help them to overcome those things that are bogging them down. Now, Father, bless us, help us, and God, help us to bless you, because you are worthy of our praise. Meet every need, use this unworthy vessel, we'll praise you for it, for it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. I want you to notice three things as a way of introduction. The first thing I want you to notice is the chiding or the scolding or the rebuking of the Lord. Now, can I say the Lord didn't rebuke them in a nasty spirit? He did it out of love. But he explains to them that in verse number 30 that God closed the grass of the field. It's there today and tomorrow it's thrown into the oven. But he says this, shall not... Um, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? I wonder how many times the Lord's had to look at us and say, O ye of little faith. I mean, how good has God been to you and I? How many prayers has he heard and answered? How many needs has he met? How many times has he propelled you through or over or around? Uh, how many times has he proved himself in your life? Uh, and yet, when things come against us, how many times does he have to say, O oh, ye of little faith? Amen. Can I say, God feeds the grasshoppers, he feeds the worms, he feeds the birds, he feeds all the plant life, he feeds everything, he holds the stars uh, where they are. Uh, God takes care of everything, and he died for you. Don't you think he knows how to take care of you? Sure. But how many times does he have to say, O oh, ye of little faith? Uh, I, I don't know, I can't get off of that right now, but, but Donald, I know one thing, I, 
I know how frustrated I get when I have preached messages and preached messages and still you see people sit there and they, they face obstacles and they don't put their faith in the Lord and uh, they, they begin to call on you, Pastor, why is this happening? And Pastor, why? And you've already given them the answer. And then it'll click. And you think, hallelujah, they got it. Till the next problem comes. And the next problem. O ye of little faith. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if we have little faith, it's because we're not hearing what God says. We're not listening to preaching. We're not listening when we daily read the Bible. We're not making the Bible the very absolute and final authority of our lives. So when we face things, we don't have faith to overcome them. Mm -mm. I've heard people say, boy, God gave me a verse. Only two weeks later, the devil come against them. And then their verse isn't good enough no more. Sure. Did God speak or did he not speak? Huh? But James sang that song. If the, if, the, if the mountains be removed, if the earth is taken away, if everything, you can still stand on the promises of the word of God. But yet, mountains aren't moved and the earth isn't taken away. And, you know, you, you still can't stand on it. Mm -mm. He sings that song, I wouldn't bat an eye. Most Christians can't sing that song and mean it from their heart. O oh, ye of little faith. I hope that can't be said of you. O oh, ye of little faith. We see the chiding. Now notice the comforting. You see, the Lord, hallelujah, is the Lord. He's not like a bunch of preachers. Well, I've heard preachers just chew you out and don't help you. He lets them know they have little faith, but now he's about ready to comfort them. Look what he says in, in, in verse number 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. I've got good news. Long before you ever know you need it, he already knows. Hmm? He knows what you have need of. A lot of times we think we know what we have need of. He knows what you have need of. Uh, he knows how much breath you need in your body. He knows how much blood you need pumping through your body. He knows how much food you need. He knows the bills you got to pay. He knows everything that you need. You can take comfort in that. Right. Hmm? Uh, I got news for you. You don't have to crawl and roll around on the ground and beg God and plead with God and, and dress in sackcloth and ashes and trying to uh, cut yourself and get God's attention. God knows, friend. And all you got to do is just position yourself to receive the answer. He knows. We see the chiding. We see the comforting. But notice his commanding. What does he command them? Look what he says in verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh-oh. You say, well, the Lord knows what I need, but I, I haven't got it yet. Well, either you really don't need it, or you're telling on yourself. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you let me ask you something are you seeking him and his kingdom and his righteousness first let me put that in hillbilly language do you put God first see if you put him first according to what Jesus promised right there in that verse he'll add those things that you need but if you don't put him first, he's not obligated to meet your needs. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. Some, that didn't register with some, Brother Bob. If you put him first, he's obligated through that promise to meet your needs. Amen. But if you don't put him first, he's not obligated. Why should he be concerned about your house when you're not concerned about his house? Yeah. He has the power to meet anything that you are facing or any need that you have. And if he's not meeting it, you might be just telling on yourself. Thank you, Brother Phil. Huh? 
He goes on to conclude in verse 34, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. You know what he's trying to teach us? We have no hope of tomorrow. All you got's right now. So you better live to the fullest for God right now. If he blesses you with tomorrow, then live for God tomorrow. Mm, seek for the things you need tomorrow, tomorrow. But you might not have tomorrow, so you better tonight put God first. I wonder with God's help, just preach on this little simple thought tonight. I want to preach on seeking God. Seeking God. There's a whole lot of things that goes on in churches and in so-called believers' lives, but there's not a whole lot of seeking God. Hmm? All you got to do is sit around and listen to people, and you'll find out how much time they've spent with God and how much time they're seeking God. And the psalmist said in Psalms 105, verse 1, O give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, Make known his deeds among the people. This all kind of sounds like a worship service. Now listen. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. We ought to thank God. And call upon his name. We ought to talk to God and pray to God. Make known his deeds among the people. We ought to testify and let everybody know how good God's been. Then it says in verse 2, Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. We ought to sing unto him. The problem is a lot of times we open up them songbooks, we just sing. We ought to open up them songbooks and sing unto him. Uh, uh, we ought to sing with everything and every fiber of our being. Uh, praise unto God because it's through and by him that we have our being. Uh, it says, tell of all his wondrous works. Once again, we need to tell everybody about the great things of God. Uh, then it says in verse 30, glory ye in his holy name. We ought to glory in his name. We're not worthy to even speak it. We ought to take refuge in glory in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Uh, the Bible then says this, listen, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. You know why some of you didn't come in here rejoicing tonight? You haven't been seeking the Lord. He says in verse 4 of Psalms 105, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face forevermore it said seek the Lord didn't say seek to have your needs met didn't say uh, seek the world's goods didn't say seek for filet mignon it said seek the Lord and his strength seek his face evermore you see when we seek him and we seek Him first, business will pick up around our lives. Hmm? So let me give you some things about seeking the Lord. Can I say, first of all, that believers are to seek His approval. Can I say one thing that children want is they want their parents' approval. Little kids always want to hear good job by mommy and daddy. They'll paint a picture and they want to hear good job. They, uh, 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 they'll, they'll do, uh, they'll color something or they'll try to make something or they'll do something. They'll clean up their room. All they're looking for is approval. Now the difference between children that have self-esteem and children that do not is the parents will reinforce them by telling them they did a good job. It may not be perfect. It may not be the prettiest thing that ever was done. Uh, it may not be something you want to show the neighbors or the relatives. Uh, but they put forth an effort, uh, and the parents recognize that, uh, and they praise their children for how good they did. Uh, uh, but, uh, friend, uh, those that do not have a self-esteem, uh, who do not have a, a, a confidence, uh, uh, you can tell what happens when they do something. Uh, uh, mom or dad will say, well, you could have done better. Uh, well, what if you... You know, taking a little more time and spend a little time. Why did you cut her out of the lines? Uh, why did you make it look like this? Why did you? They do not build self-esteem in their children. Now, let me take that to a spiritual sense now. Those people that walk by faith, 
those people that uh, 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 live above their obstacles and their hindrances, uh, those that come rejoicing, those that uh, have learned the secret to worship, uh, they have sought the Lord and sought the Lord's approval. When the Lord tells you you've done good, you don't have to worry about what the devil says. You don't have to worry about some little obstacle, some little hindrance, some little pitfall in your life because you sought the Lord's approval. You and I should never take a step without knowing that God's pleased with us taking that step. We should never ever launch out to do anything uh, or launch out to start anything uh, or be a part of anything unless we have God's approval on it. Let me give you a verse. In 1 Kings chapter number 3, we find that God puts Solomon over the kingdom after David has gone off the scene. And can I say, God tells Solomon to ask whatever he wants. You know why God don't ask Baptists that? You just figured it out. Hmm. You see, Solomon was raised by David, and David was a man after God's own heart, uh, and David instructed Solomon to seek after the words of the Lord. Now, this is what Solomon asked for. In verse number 9, in 1 Kings 3, the Bible says, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart, to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? He didn't ask for wealth. He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for his needs. He didn't ask for it. He asked for God's approval to be able to discern the will of God in judging God's people. Now listen what God said in verse number 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. When you are truly seeking the Lord, you need to seek His approval. Is this going to please the Lord? Uh, is the Lord going to be satisfied in this? Uh, is the Lord going to sanction this? Uh, is the Lord in the midst of this thing? Of course, you know, God went on to make Solomon the wisest man that ever lived. And he did become wealthy. And he did become uh, uh, the greatest uh, 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 of his day. Uh, uh, but can I say this? Jesus said, hey, don't get hung up on Solomon. Uh, uh, because uh, in all his glory, he wasn't as beautiful as a lily in the field. huh? Hmm. But I'm here to tell you. What Solomon asked pleased the Lord. When you seek the Lord, are you seeking his approval? Because I tell you what a lot of people are seeking, Miss Crystal. They're seeking a license. Lord, uh, let me be in your will, but let me live as close to the world as I can. They want a license to live however they want. That's why a lot of people don't like getting into the Scriptures. Because the Scriptures will tell you how you're supposed to live. They won't... Help your ego to let you live how you want to live. Hmm? You know why a lot of people wasn't real excited when I talked about we're going to start a study on Baptist distinctions, Brother Phil? Because people really don't care. Now, if I told them we was going to study on the book of Revelation, the end times, which, by the way, that'll come up in what we believe. But if I announce we're going to do a study on Revelation, place be packed. Because people are interested in that. Because you know why? It's talked about when we get to go to heaven. But you start talking about how you're supposed to live like heaven now? They don't like that too much. So you need to seek the Lord's approval. Can I say secondly, in seeking the Lord, a believer is to seek the Lord's administration or the Lord's direction. You all know these verses in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Boy, that sounds so good, but people don't do it. Trust the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Yeah, you're real good about doing that when somebody else gets cancer. But when the doctor said, we need to run some tests, you're not, you're not no longer leaning on his understanding. You're leaning on your own. Hmm? 
You're real excited living by faith as long as your bills are paid. Hmm. But see, when you have to lean on his understanding, he does all things well. A lot of times he doesn't let you know what he's up to. He just says, follow me. He might take you down dark paths. He might cause you to learn how to bow so that you might one day learn how to stand. But see, in seeking the Lord, you need to seek His approval, but you also need to seek His administration, His direction. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? That's the first thing that Saul of Tarsus asked God after he got saved. He went on to become the Apostle Paul and did great things for God. It all started with a question, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then he just followed God all the way around the world preaching the gospel. Amen. Huh? Now, we like to do it this way. Lord, I want to do this. Hmm? No. He'll direct your paths. Hmm? Hmm. The Bible makes it clear that the Lord orders the steps of a good man. Does he order your steps? Are you seeking him? Are you seeking him to direct your path? To lead you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake? Hmm? Boy, it's gotten real quiet. Seeking the Lord. We're to seek his approval. We're to seek his administration. We're to seek his authority, his power. Deuteronomy 8.18 says this, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he sware unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Psalm 63, 2 says, To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the, the sanctuary. Have you ever sought for the power of God? Miss Lynn, when we do, many times we seek for it selfishly. I want the power of God so I can get out of the mess I'm in. You need to seek the power of God before you get in the mess. Hmm? When was the last time you got in your prayer closet and said, God, I want the power of God to rest on my life that others might see the greatness of God in my feebleness? You see, the Apostle Paul learned the secret of that. He said, when I'm weak, then am I strong. Right. Amen. Hmm? See, as long as you're handling your life and you've got the wheel and you're steering it the way you want to, you don't need the power of God. You're running in your own power. But when you're willing to get down on your face and the Lord said, Thy will be done, you may have to go through some, again, hardships that the power of God may rest upon you. Hmm? Everybody loves them stories about the three Hebrews in the fiery furnace. Boy, they had the power of God on them. Yeah, but they did go through the furnace. Everybody talks about Elijah praying down fire from on high, but Elijah did have to live by the brook chair until it dried up, and then he had to go uh, depend on a widow woman and, and her empty meal barrel and her empty cruise of oil to sustain him. He went through three and a half years uh, of leanness in order to be able to pray down the fire of God. But you need to seek the Lord's power because your power ain't cutting it for you. Hmm? You need to seek the Lord. We need to seek His approval, His administration, His authority, but we also need to seek His assurance. In John fourteen twenty seven, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, my dear friends, when you have assurance from God, it don't matter the circumstances. When you have the peace of God, you can face anything that comes down the pike at you. Are you seeking His peace? His assurance? Hmm? Can I tell you the key to all these things? Is to seek Him. When you get in the, in, in, in just in the middle of His lap, Nothing else matters. Just keep walking to him till you run into him. 
And when you run into him, it don't matter what is going on, how big the sea is raging or how big the earthquake or how hot the fire is. It don't matter when you're in the center of his lap. Hmm? Again, a little child, thunderstorm in the middle of the night, spooky. But if they can get into mom and daddy's room and crawl up and pull the covers over their head in between mom and daddy, then it don't matter. And if you can just get to daddy, the heavenly father, it don't matter. Yeah. Need to seek his assurance. I'm glad for the peace of God. I had a guy tell me the other day, he said, I come up my cancer. He said, you did remarkable. He said, I can't believe how you went through that thing. And bounced around. I said, Lord's good. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Huh? Yes. You can ask Miss Annette, not one second from the time she told me till today did I fret over the cancer. You see, because there's one walking with me that's never failed me. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And I got news for you. I was walking with him before I had the cancer. I was walking with him the day that I got the diagnosis. And can I say, he never had failed me before. Why would he fail me then? Hmm. I didn't go to pieces and then seek peace. I had peace when the verdict came. You see, because I realize the great physician is the absolute and final authority. Now, I went through some discomforting things, but it was okay. Because you got to know me. I don't like any of that stuff. But when he's with you, you can handle it all. Hmm? It's called assurance. I told her the day before we went and seen the surgeon. I said, I just don't have peace canceling any of my meetings I got scheduled to preach in. Miss Noreen, I didn't miss a one. I said, how's that? Well, just ask Jesus. That's all I can tell you. I had a guy called me the day before the surgeon and said, I can't get you off my heart. Can you come preach a meeting? I said, when are you thinking about? He said, two weeks. I'm thinking my my mind, I'm thinking I'm going to go see the surgeon tomorrow. I'm having surgery on Thursday. That's what I'm thinking. Huh? I said, can I call you back? So we went and saw the surgeon. He said, well, we're about three weeks out. So that gives me two weeks I can be down preaching me. And it's fine. Uh, you say, what's, it, what's that all about? It's all about him. My life is his. Uh, he is mine. Uh, and my friend, he has it all under control. Uh, yes, he does. I'm trying to help you tonight. You need to seek him tonight because you don't know what's coming down the pike tomorrow. Right. Too many people... They don't do business with God. They don't walk with God. They don't spend time with God. They, don't have, uh, they haven't sought the Lord. Then the bottom falls out and they wonder where God's at. Sure. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. You know, one last thing that you need to seek the Lord over. A lot of people, they don't do this. You need to seek His advice. The Bible makes it clear He does all things well. We know that he's omniscient. He knows everything. So why would you listen to Dr. Phil, the one on TV or that one? Before consulting with Jesus. Mm. Why would you put more confidence in even your pastor than you would God? Mm. You need to seek his advice. He'll never stare you wrong. It's impossible for God to lie. But listen to what the Bible says about the, the counsel of the Lord. The Bible says in Exodus 18, 19, Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. Judges 20, 23. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until even, and asked counsel of the Lord, uh, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. Uh, 1 Samuel 14, 37. And Saul asked counsel of God, uh, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Uh, 
Wilt thou deliver them into the hand of Israel? Uh, but he answered him, Not that day. Uh, Psalms 33, 11, The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. Uh, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Uh, Proverbs 8, 14, Counsel is mine uh, and sound wisdom. Uh, I am understanding. Uh, I have strength. Uh, in Isaiah 28, 29, uh, This also cometh from the Lord of hosts, uh, which is wonderful in counsel uh, and excellent in working uh, need to seek the Lord's advice he's given you a whole book 66 books over 1100 chapters over 773,000 words of his authority and his advice Amen. he's got every answer for everything you'll ever need in his book and he says in the second verse of that song seek and ye shall find. Ask, and it shall be given. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. When was the last time you sought God for His advice? Now here's what we do, Brother Bob. Well, I want to know if it's God's will for me to miss church this uh, Sunday so I can go to NASCAR. Let me find a verse here. Oh yeah, over here in Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw a wheel. Hallelujah, I get to go to NASCAR. That's what we do. We look for a verse to sanction what we want to do. That's not seeking His advice. Mm -mm. See, because if you seek His advice, you'll end up over there in Hebrews 10, 25, where it says, Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, so much more as you see the day approaching. Thank you, Clint. We've got one amen on that verse. See, can I help you with something? A lot of things we already know the answer. We just don't want to hear the answer. It's kind of like the little kid. I've been on little kids tonight. The little kid whose mommy tells him not to get the cookies in the cookie jar. So the little kid is, turns his head away and is reaching for the cookie, car, cookie jar because he thinks if he can't see it, then mama can't see him not seeing it. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of how we are with God. Well, if I'm not really, then God's not really. No, He sees it all. Mm -mm. And my kids will tell you, even to this day, Mama knows everything. Mm -mm. But see, we, we seek God's approval knowing, before we even ask it, that God's not pleased with it. Mm -mm. That's why we're ashamed to bring it up a lot of times. Hmm? Listen, if somebody in the church asks you where you was and you're ashamed to tell them, probably not right with God. But if you seek God's counsel and God gives you an amen and an okay on it, then you can look at anybody in the eye and say, well, God told me to do this. Huh? I had a guy one time disapproved of a preacher I had come preach. He did. He had a real problem with it. This was years ago, long before you ever showed up on the scene. Where were you, by the way? Huh? I know, you're in the sinning business, I know. But listen, he got real upset. said, why'd you have that guy? I said, all I can tell you is God woke me up in the middle of the night. God told me to call him. I said, I didn't even know how to get a hold of him. So I had to make three or four phone calls to get a hold of him. And I got a hold of him and asked him to come, and then he came. I said, so you got a problem with it? Take it up with God. He didn't like that answer. That's all I had. God said, and we got one rule right here, mind the Lord. But I wonder how much farther we'd be down the road if we really mind the Lord every single day of our lives by seeking His counsel. Can I just close with this little thought? Too many do not seek His counsel. They're not seeking God. Let me give you a verse. Isaiah chapter 30. Listen to this. This is where... Here, let me give you a little prelude to the verse. You wonder why so many churches waited so long to open back up and why some still aren't open? Listen to the verse I'm about ready to give you. They haven't sought the Lord. Hmm? You wonder why so many Christians uh, are so caught up in everything that the governor is saying and not the Lord? They haven't sought the Lord. 
Now listen to this verse, Isaiah chapter 30, verse number 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. And that cover with a covering, boy, he's talking about wearing a garment of the enemy. But I, I got to read that, I thought about taking cover of a covering. Y'all get my drift? Yeah. That take cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Verse 2. That walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. They're trusting in Egypt, which is always a picture of the world. They're trusting in Pharaoh, who's always the ruler of the world, the sorry, no good devil. They haven't taken counsel from the Lord. They haven't sought Him. Therefore, the confusion of the world sets in on them. That's why so many of them are... I had a phone call this week. Lady, ask... Is your church open? This is Monday. I'm thinking, you mean right now? That's what I'm thinking, you know. No. I said, we've been open since Mother's Day. That kind of took, I almost got a gasp. <gasps> you know what I'm saying? Now I'm thinking, you know, she's going to ask, do we wear a mask? Do we social distance? You know, she, you know and then she said, I want to ask you about your church. So I'm thinking, she's going to ask, do we use the King James Bible? You know, do, you know, here's her only question about our church. And she's going to base her whole pretense on coming that we're open and the answer to the question. Do you all have a band? I said, well, we don't have a rock band. We don't have smoke on the stage and screaming guitars. But we do have the possums. I didn't tell her the name of the possum. I said, but we got some good old boys that like to pick guitars and mandolins. I said, but we still sing out of the hymn books. We sing them old songs. Uh, 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 I'll fly away and, and uh, 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 the old rugged cross and uh, blessed assurance. And I said, we got piano. We got guys back up. I said, but always the emphasis is on the words uh, and singing praise to the Lord. She said, that's all I wanted to know. So I guess if you want to build a church today, all you need is not have a band. Huh? But too many of us won't even ask that. We base everything of our lives on how we feel or on whether or not we're afraid of it. And when we're afraid, we'll run to Jesus. Seek ye the Lord first. His righteousness. Everything else be added unto you. Let me ask you a question. Do you seek the Lord? Really, do you seek? You say, well, I pray. I didn't ask you that. Most people, when they pray, they're asking for their needs to be met. He just told us all that stuff be taken care of if you seek the Lord. If you seek the Lord, when was the last time you sought Him for something bigger than yourself? When was the last time you said, Lord, I have a real anxiety of telling my coworkers about you because the fear of man bringeth a snare. I understand, Lord. Lord, will you give me boldness? Have you sought the Lord for that? You see, God's always in helping you tell other people about Him. Lord, I'm really struggling in this area of my Christian life because I haven't sought you. Lord, would you allow me to just come sit next to you for a little while and get your direction and get your approval? and get your insight on this. God, will you show me a verse? Will you show me a chapter? Will you show me something that will help me in this? I mean, have you really sought the Lord? I told you all, 
to start some, I don't like doing series. I just don't. I, there are some guys that got a gift for it. They can do that. It's because they don't like to study. They just, you know, they go get a book and they just do the book. I just, I'm not good at, because I, I know me, I'll get to reading the scriptures and something will pop up and I thought, oh, that's good. I got to preach on that. Wow, that's good. So I sought the Lord. Lord, do you want me to do this series? Because I also know that there might be some get upset. And there might be some that tune in on live stream that think they know all about me that's going to learn some things they didn't know. You say, are you afraid of that? No. But they might be afraid after they hear it. I'm just trying to help you with some things. I sought the Lord, and the Lord made it very clear in my heart there's a need for it, and we need to do it. And so we're going to do it. And he'll give me grace to stay with the series. But I'm just trying to help you with something. When was the last time you sought him? I mean, really sought the Lord over anything. Not ask him for your needs. Not ask him for anything superficial. When was the last time you just sought him? Say, Lord, I sure would like to feel your touch. Lord, I sure would like to feel your breath on my neck. Lord, I sure would like to have your approval that I'm doing what you want me to do. When's the last time you really just sought Him? Lord, what would you have me to do? I know what you got the church to do. What would you have me to do, Lord? When's the last time you really sought the Lord? If it wasn't today, you're not fulfilling Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 need to seek him early and often and friend if you do nothing else will really matter it'll be okay I highly recommend being biblical by seeking the Lord let's all stand brother Clint why don't you come sing that song again while he's getting his guitar I'm going to sing that again let's pray father we bless you God, help us to seek you more, seek you early, seek you often, always seek you first. Help us to please you. Help us, Lord, to spend so much time with you, others take note, and they want to spend time with you too. Bless down this invitation. Lord, if we're all honest tonight, we'd realize we don't seek you near as much as we should. God, speak to hearts tonight. Give assurance. Give faith. God, help folks. God, save that one nearest hell. Father, we'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.